Can one get you drunk? Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Exotic Wine Travel. We're going to try something different today. I did a little Google search of the most commonly asked wine questions. I'm going to try to answer them today. Number one, what wine is sweet? This is a difficult question to answer because it really depends on the type of wine drinker that you are. There's a lot of different types of wine drinkers and I'm going to generalize. For me, there's three main types of wine drinkers. The majority of people that, that consume wine are people that enjoy it. They don't really care to know that much about it. They just enjoy the flavors. They enjoy maybe the a little bit of an alcohol buzz and, and they're not going to spend a lot of money on wine. That's the majority of wine drinkers. Then you have the hardcore geeks like myself. Maybe that makes up 2-3% of everybody that drinks wine. And those are the people that really care about the variety, the terroir, wine making styles. Is it aged in oak? Is it stainless steel? Is it a fresh wine? Is it a mature wine? When should I be drinking this? Is it a macerated wine? This is a white wine. Red wine, light red wine. What country is it from? What's the vintage? Was the vintage warm? Was the vintage cool? And then less than 1% of wine drinkers are those that are drinking really the, the top, 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 top shelf stuff, the collectible stuff, putting it away in the cellar, uh, buying wine as an investment, only drinking that really, really pricey stuff. It's kind of like food. You have a lot of people that don't really care what they're eating. Could be fast food all the time. Could be McDonald's all the time. Could be chips. It's just food to them. Then you have a smaller segment of people that really care about how the vegetables are farmed. Are they organic? Are they not organic? Where's the meat coming from? How's it prepared? Like putting flavors together. And then you have the ultra refined palate that really care about cooking styles, techniques, maybe you're going to fine dining often. I have a feeling that the people that are typing in this question are more of the former, more of those people that are just general consumers. To answer that, in America at least, a lot of the wines you're going to find in the supermarket, especially below 9 to 10 bucks, are going to be sweet. Take a look at a very popular red wine in the States, Apothic Red. That red wine has 16.4 grams per liter of residual sugar. That would be considered more of an off-dry style of wine, because I like wines that are drier, a little more austerity. I'm always amazed by those wines back in the States, the real entry-level inexpensive stuff, how much vanilla is in, how much sweet they are. Those wines are just not for me, but they're easy to enjoy. My friend Mike Vesett, the wine economist, broke this down in greater detail in his book, Money, Taste, and Wine. It's complicated. He talked about why Yellowtail, the Australian brand, had such success in the U.S. market. They help smooth out things that generally people don't like in red wine. General consumers don't like tannins, that drying sensation in their mouth when the saliva is stripped away by the tannins and generally they like wines that are a little bit more sweeter not drier that's what yellowtail solved if you're looking for those types of wines moscato is going to be something that you really enjoy moscato di asti more inexpensive rieslings that you find at the supermarket are going to be cheaper not the type of Rieslings that people like me are going to drink. <laughs> That's a different category altogether. For hardcore geeks and wine collectors, I think sweet wine is such an underrated category. Hundreds of years ago, sweet wines were so coveted because there wasn't sugar everywhere. We couldn't just find Coca-Cola. We couldn't have sweet stuff all the time. That's why these sweet wines were so coveted. I think it's the most magical transformation from grape to wine in the world. I'm a huge fan of Sauterne in, in Bordeaux, Barsac. All Tokai are probably my favorite wines in the world. Port, Vendue Naturel in the south of France, Commandaria from Cyprus, another legendary overlooked wine. I think sweet wines are just extraordinary and they age beautifully. Next question, how many wine bottles in a case? This is confusing to a lot of people. When it goes by production, when people, especially in the US, they report their production by a number of cases, where in Europe it's usually by bottles. And a case is 12 bottles. However, for the consumer, generally more expensive wines are sold in six bottles cases or if you go to the supermarket you buy a case it's generally six wines because 12 bottles are a little bit more intimidating I think six is a little bit more digestible to the consumer and on their wallet next question can wine go bad yes wine is a living thing if let go if you leave a wine open generally what happens is wine wants to turn into vinegar and if it goes unchecked that's what will eventually happen with time that's because of oxidation oxidation is a loss of electrons going back to my chemistry days but oxidation Oxidation is a, a decomposition reaction. The easiest way to think about it is think about if you take a bite of an apple. It's all white and crisp, but what happens after you leave it in air? It starts to go brown. The flavors start to change a little bit too. That's what happens with wine when it comes in contact with oxygen and oxidation starts to occur. When I was a chemistry major, I always liked this little geek fact. Oxidation is a reaction where you lose electrons, but it doesn't have to include oxygen. In the case of wine, yeah, it does. Next. 
What wine goes with salmon? I was actually surprised that there was, this was a commonly Googled question. For salmon, I like a nice dry rosé or I like a Blanc de Blanc champagne. For those of you who don't, don't know what Blanc de Blanc champagne is, champagne made 100% from Chardonnay. Next question, how much wine is in a glass? This much? In reality, a bottle of wine contains 25 ounces, and a serving of wine is 5 ounces, so you're going to get 5 glasses. If you're going by the metric system, 750 milliliters of wine are in a bottle, and a glass one serving is 150 milliliters. However, when you're out at nicer wine bars, they generally give you 100 milliliters, so they give you very little. My general rule of thumb, if you're having a dinner party, a house party, and everybody is drinking wine, I like to have more than one bottle per person. So let's say we have 10 people, I would like to have have 12 to maybe 15 bottles of wine for that party. Next, can wine freeze? Because of alcohol, the freezing point in wine is lower than normal water. So the higher the alcohol, the lower the freezing point. Generally, they say that wine freezes between 15 and 20 degrees Fahrenheit, which is negative 9 to negative 6 degrees Celsius. Last time I was in the U.S., I got a lot of wine delivered to me during the winter months. It got pretty cold. It definitely, I think, got down to that borderline temperature, 15 degrees. Luckily, none of the bottles did freeze. When bottles of wine do freeze, since water expands, you'll see the cork start to pop out, push up against the capsule. I have had that happen before when I've left wine in the freezer. Generally, I let the wine thaw out, and maybe it won't taste as good, but the wine's not completely ruined. Can wine get you drunk? I don't know who's Googling that. Yes, wine can get you drunk. <laughs> Unless you're drinking some of those new non-alcoholic wines, which I haven't tried yet, but I don't know if I would enjoy that much. How much wine gets you drunk? This is completely different person to person because different people metabolize alcohol differently. One thing that I have noticed when it comes to wine, and I've never been able to figure this out from a physiological perspective, is when I drink higher quality wines, maybe small producers, I generally don't get drunk as I drink through the wine. I think of a wine as more quote unquote industrial, more mass produced, I can feel it right away. My, my face starts to get red, I start to feel hot, my face starts to feel flushed right away. If wines are from smaller producers, doesn't have to necessarily be natural wine quote unquote or biodynamic or organic wine, but just higher quality wine, I just notice I can keep drinking, keep drinking. My face doesn't get flushed. I don't get warm. I told a fellow wine writer that's how I judge the quality of wine sometimes, and he looked at me like I was crazy. But hey, nobody knows your body better than you. So just break out some wine. Take a few glasses. See how much it takes you to get drunk. The Italians say if you're drinking wine and you're getting drunk, that means that you're not eating enough. <laughs> I love the culture in Europe where you're always having wine with a meal, and the food absorbs the alcohol so you don't feel it as much. The only problem is... If you want to drink a lot of wine, you just got to keep eating and eating and eating. <laughs> I'm trying to come up with a bunch of different creative videos, stuff that's useful for you. Let me know if you like this in the comments below. And while you're at it, why don't you subscribe to the YouTube channel and click the bell so you know when new videos come out. Did I answer your question? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you soon.